गुरवे गौरचंद्राय राधिकाले कृष्णाय कृष्ण भक्ताय तदभक्ताय नमो वंशा कल्पतरुभ कृपा सिंधुभ्य पति पावनेभ्यो वैष्णवेभ्यो नमो महाबदन्याय कृष्ण प्रेम प्रदाय कृष्णाय कृष्ण चैतन्य नमने आगे देखो दुकान के भी आज बड़े खुशी की बात है कि हम लोग भारत के वृंदावन से मथुरा से निकलकर पूर्वी विश्व के मलेशिया इंडोनेशिया सिंगापुर ऑस्ट्रेलिया के बहुत से ऑस्ट्रेलिया के प्राय सभी बड़े बड़े शहरों में और वहां से फिर फिजी में हम लोग आए यहाँ भी हम लोगों ने नदी में और सुबह में लंबासा में अभी कुछ प्रचार कर यहाँ आए हैं विशेष करके हम हिंदू भारत के प्रवासियों से मिलकर के बड़ी खुशी हो रहे हैं यहाँ पर देख रहे हैं वो फेस भारतीय जैसे सभी लग रहे हैं तो दो एक बातें कहने का अवसर है इसलिए मैं कहूंगा यह तो आज हम लोगों के महाप्रभु के परिकरों में आज अद्वैताचार्य जी का आविर्भाव दिवस है आज से पांच सौ वर्ष पहले कृष्ण श्रीमती राधिका जी के प्रेम भाव को लेकर जगत को कुछ प्रेम की शिक्षा देने के लिए धर्म की शिक्षा देने के लिए नवदीप धाम में पधारे थे उनके परिकरों में अद्वैताचार्य महाविष्णु के अवतार कहे जाते हैं आज उनका आविर्भाव तिथि ये एक वैदिक सत्य है नित्य सत्य है कोई कोई चीज माने या न माने भगवान है या नहीं बहुत दूर की बात किंतु एक चीज सत्य है जिसको सभी धर्मी विधर्मी जो कुछ हो उसको मानने के लिए बाध्य हैं कि इस जगत में मृत्यु जरूर है इसको डिनाई कोई नहीं कर सकता इसलिए मृत्यु जरूर जगत में एक सत्य है और दूसरी बात कि जगत में ये भी सत्य है कि जो जन्मे हैं मरना तो जरूर पड़ेगा किंतु उनको जरूर बूढ़ा होना होगा यदि बचे गए तो बूढ़ी होना होगा और बहुत से प्रॉब्लम है बुढ़ापे का दुख और संसार में तरह तरह की के कष्ट हैं रोग हैं इसको भी कोई अस्वीकार नहीं कर सकता और ये जगत आया कहां से बुद्धिमान पुरुष वह है जो यह सोचता है कि आज ऐसा काम करूं जैसे दिन में कोई दुख ना आए कोई प्रॉब्लम नहीं किंतु उससे भी वो व्यक्ति सुखी है जो ये विचार करता है कि हमारे जीवन में कोई दुख ना आए 
और उससे भी वो सुखी है और बुद्धिमान काल आएगा जो आने वाले जन्मों में भी हम कभी भी दुखी न रहे सब समय सुखी रहे अभी देखिए अभी जिस स्टेज में आप लोग हैं हो सकता है कि आप अभी सुखी हो किंतु एक दिन सबको जरूर बुरा होना होगा आंखें कमजोर हो जाएंगी दांत भी कमजोर हो जाएंगे केश श्वेत हो जाएंगे अंत में लकड़ी पकड़ करके चलना पड़ेगा अंत में यह शरीर छोड़ देना पड़ेगा जिस समय छोड़ देना पड़ेगा उसमें क्या करेंगे एक राजा था बहुत ही धनी मानी सब प्रकार से सुखी था उसकी स्त्री भी बहुत बुद्धिमती और बड़ी रूपवती गुणवती थी वो भी बहुत था उसके लड़के भी बड़े सुशील थे एक दिन एक संत आया उनके पास में और कहा जी मैं राजा से मिलना चाहता हूं राजा ने कहा जिसे आया होगा तो कुछ मांगने के लिए आया होगा आजकल के जितने भी डिबोटीज होते हैं वो मांगने के लिए जाते हैं इसलिए वो डर गया कहा जैसे ये जरूर कुछ मांगने के कब कल परसों में मिल लेगा आज समय नहीं आज मैं बहुत व्यस्त हूं तो प्रहरी ने उनको कह दिया वो लौट गया वो तीन चार दिन के बाद में फिर आया फिर राजा ने कहा फिर वही आफत आई फिर उसको उन्होंने कहा दिया जैसा फिर पीछे मिल लेना तो वो राजा से हताश होकर के चला गया रानी के पास में और खबर दिया महारानी जी मैं एक संत हूं आपसे मिलना चाहता हूं तो पुरुष लोग बड़े हो सकते हैं कि निष्ठुर हों किंतु पत्नियां उनकी बहुत सुशील होती है भिक्षा मांगने पर भी मथुरा के ब्राह्मणों ने उन कृष्ण को नहीं खिलाया और उनकी पत्नियों ने थाल में परोस करके भर भर करके कृष्ण के पास में गए पीछे वो पछताने लगे जी हमारी विद्या को अधिकार है हमारे ब्रह्म होने का अधिकार है जग करने का अधिकार है ये स्त्रियां कुछ भी नहीं जान करके कृष्ण की इतनी सेवा की और हम लोग ऐसे दुर्भाग्य जो उस कृष्ण पर ब्रह्म से वंचित रह गए तो इसलिए रानी के पास में गया रानी ने बहुत जल्दी से बुलाया जाओ जल्दी से बुला लो और उसका आसन दे करके बैठा है बड़े प्रेम से पूछा जी महात्मा जी आप क्या चाहते हैं कल मैं कुछ चाहता नहीं मैं भगवत भजन करता हूं किंतु साथ साथ में मैं थोड़ा सा एस्ट्रोलॉजर धोई हूं कुछ जानता हूं ये सब हाथ देखना रेखाएं जानना जानता हूं मैंने विचार किया ये यह राजा बहुत ही भले आदमी है किंतु पंद्रह दिन में इनकी मृत्यु होने वाली है इसलिए आपको सूचित करने के लिए आया राजा ने अवकाश नहीं दिया या इसलिए आपको कहने के लिए राजा ये अब पंद्रह दिन में से पांच दिन तो निकल गए अब दस दिन बाकी है इसमें इनको मरना है इसलिए जो कुछ करना है आप प्रस्तुत होकर के कर लीजिए रानी घबरा गई और राजा को बुलवाया इनसे तो महात्मा जी से तो नहीं मिल सका किंतु रानी के ऑर्डर को वो डिनाई नहीं कर सका वो आया या और इतने में ये तो महात्मा जी तो वहां से चंपट हो गए चले गए वो राजा आया जी किसके मुख को जल्दी से बुलाया तो एक महात्मा आया वो कह रहा था जी मैं एस्ट्रोलॉजर भी हूं भगवत भजन करता हूं तो ये राजा जी अब दस दिन के अंदर में मिल जाए मरेंगे अवश्य मरेंगे और ये कह करके वो चला गया जो कुछ करना है कर उन्होंने कहा अब क्या करें महाराज ने कहा जा रही तो मैंने गलती की मैंने उससे मिला नहीं ढूंढवाया ढूंढवाए तो देखो सिर मुंडन होगा यहाँ पर कुंड होगा गले में तुलसी होगी हाथ में माला वो हरि नाम करता होगा जल्दी से ढूंढा गौर वर्ण का होगा गोरा रंग का बुलाओ खोजते खोजते नदी के किनारे देखा जो वो बैठा था उसको बुलाना है कहा महात्मा जी आपने ये कहा जी मैं मर जाऊंगा दस दिन में तो जरूर मरेंगे गारंटी है हमको यहीं पर रख लीजिए बंद करके और देखिए जरूर आप मरेंगे कोई भी बचा नहीं सकता बीस समय से कोई हस्ती नहीं है जो बचा ले अब तो राजा घबरा गया जी क्या करना चाहिए मैं क्या करूं यही तो मैं कहने आया था जुम चेत जाओ तुम जो कुछ करना है करो 
राजा घबरा गए उन्होंने कहा कि घबराने की तो जरूरत नहीं है तुमने जीवन में बहुत पुण्य कार्य किया है माता पिता की सेवा की है गरीबों की सहायता की है और भी किया है किंतु तो थोड़ी सी गलतियां हुई हैं तो तुमको स्वर्ग मिलेगा मैं ये भी देख रहा हूं स्वर्ग में जाओगे और वहां पर सब प्रकार की सुविधाएं तुम्हारे लिए मिलेगी जो यहाँ पर सुख नहीं है उससे और अधिक सुख मिलेंगे किंतु तो एक बात है जो वहां पर आजकल मच्छर हो गए हैं किसी प्रकार से बड़े बड़े इंडिया से वो लोग चले गए हैं काजे ने कैसे वो लोग और वहां पर बड़े बड़े काले काले हैं जिसको डस देंगे उसको मच्छर ये मलेरिया बुखार हो जाता है और मलेरिया बुखार हो तापता नहीं है वो लेकर के ही प्राण जाता है सो आप ऐसा कीजिए कि वहां पर मच्छरदानी भी बड़ी सुंदर है सब कुछ है किंतु एक मच्छरदानी जो आपके मिलेगी जो बेड पर रहेगा उसमें कोने में थोड़ा सा कटा हुआ है वहां पर सुई और धागा नहीं है बाकी सब कुछ है आप यहां से थोड़ा सा एक सुई सुई धागा समझते हैं नीदरलैंड से यहां से ली जाएगी और बाकी वहां पर सब कुछ आपको मिलेगा मैं कैसे ले जा सकता सुई धागा तो तुमने सारा जीवन क्या किया कि आज एक सुई धागा भी नहीं ले जा सकता है तो क्या ले जाएगा इतना जो कमाया कमाई का इतना तुम्हारे इतना बड़ा राज्य उसमें बड़े बड़ी फैक्ट्रियां थी और और क्या था तुम्हारे कितने सब मैनेजर और ये सब क्या क्या थे इतनी अपार संपत्ति और तुम सुई धागा नहीं ले जा सकते अभी हम गए थे उनके फैक्ट्री में देखा जो सोप बन रहे हैं कपड़े बन रहे हैं क्या क्या बन रहे हैं चावल बन रहे हैं दाव बन रहा है कौन जीवन के सारी आवश्यकता इनकी फैक्ट्री में देखा देखा मैनेजर तो देख गिनते गिनते मैं थक गया देख इतने मैनेजर हैं मैंने पूछा कि भाई डायरेक्टर कौन है <laughs> तो इतना वैभव में से तुम एक निर्डल और थ्रेड नहीं लेकर के जा सकता तो क्या ले जा सकता है किस लिए किया ये इतना जीवन जो बर्बाद किया किस लिए जो नहीं लिया अरे बुद्धिमान है जो आगे के भी चिंता कर तुम इसकी चिंता क्यों नहीं किया तुमने देखा नहीं तुम्हारे पिताजी मर गए पिताजी के पिताजी मर गए वो भी कुछ साथ नहीं ले जा सके उन्होंने शरीर छोड़ दिया तो तुमने उसको जला दिया विचार तो करो काशी अब तो मैं आपके चरणों में अब पड़ा हूं आप ही हमको बताइए मुझे क्या करना चाहिए अच्छा तो ठीक है मेरी बात मानेगा आ तो हाँ देखो भगवान का नाम करो हरे कृष्ण हरे कृष्ण 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 हरे हरे उल्टा नाम चपत जग जाना उल्टा नाम जपत जग जाना बाल्मीक भय ब्रह्म समाना उल्टा नाम मरा मरा जप करके ही बाल्मीकि ब्रह्म के समान ब्रह्म के समान माने जीवन मरण से अतीत हो गए सर्वत्र उनकी गति है कभी भी उनको मरना नहीं है कभी भी उनको कोई दुख नाम की कैलामिटी कोई भी देख फेत कुछ नहीं उस स्थिति को लाभ इसलिए तुम भगवान का नाम करो ये पन्ना दस दिन और कुछ तुमको कुछ नहीं करना है बस कह करके चले गए और देखा थे उनकी मृत्यु भी नहीं हुई कुछ नहीं वो सर सर ही एकदम सर सर बैकुंठ लोग को पहुंच गए इस जगत की तो छोड़ना ही और सर में जाकर के फिर वहां से लौटना पड़ता है और उनको लौटने की जरूरत नहीं नाम लेत भव सिंधु सुखा ही कर विचार सुजन मन माही नाम लेते भव सिंधु सुख जाए भाव माने क्या भाव माने होना क्या होना पुनः पुनः जन्म ना पुनः पुनः मरण ऐसा कोई जगत में है जो मरेगा नहीं अवश्य मरेगा इसलिए बुद्धिमान वही व्यक्ति है जो अपना लोक पर लोक सभी संवार जाता है बना जाता है ये समझिए कि हम लोग ये शरीर नहीं है हम लोग ये शरीर स्थूल हम लोग हैं क्या वी आर पार्ट एंड पार्स ऑफ सुप्रीम पार्सनॉलिटी ऑफ गॉड है इस चीज को समझे कोई पुरुष होकर क्या है कोई स्त्री कोई गोरा कोई काला कोई मछली कोई पेड़ कोई कुछ अपने कर्मों की वजह से हुए हैं किंतु जथार्थ में हम ट्रांसडेंटल हैं नित्य सत्य हमारा जन्म मरण नहीं है जिन चीजों को आप देख रहे हैं 
इनमें परिवर्तन और ध्वंस है किंतु एक ऐसी दृष्टि है जो हमारे गुरु वर्गो से मिलती है जो कृष्ण से आती है जगत गुरु कृष्ण से आती है कैसे आती है गुरु परंपरा की धारा से इस जगत में भी आपको हारमोनियम बजाना है तो किसी से सीखना पड़ेगा हमने इन लोगों से पूछा पूंजा ब्रॉदर से ये आप लोगों ने ये सब बिजनेस कहां से सीखा <laughs> सीखा कहां से कहे फादर से सीखा उनके ऋणी है ना वो कहां से सीखे होंगे कुछ उन्होंने जो सीखा वो कहां से सीखा इस तरह से गुरु परंपरा की धारा होती है ये कॉन्सिडेंटल नॉलेज है इस जगत के संबंध में जो ज्ञान है जो नष्ट हो जाते हैं जो असल चीज को देंगे नहीं संसारिक सुखों को वो तो रह जाएगा भाई इस चीज को इसलिए बुद्धिमान पुरुष हैं जो इसको करते हुए भी ये समझें कि हम लोग नित्य सनातन तत्व आत्मा है जो भगवान का अंश है ये भगवान ही जगत को स्थिर रखे हैं ये मैनेजमेंट जो है मूल उनके हाथों में है उनके बिना ये समुद्र में ज्वार भाटा नहीं आएगी सूरज नहीं उग सकते वो एक एक मिनट में एक एक बार अपनी चाल को बदलते हैं कभी एक एक मिनट कम में उगते हैं कभी एक एक मिनट बाद में उगते हैं ये सब हम लोगों को कर्मों का नियंत्रण करते हैं इसलिए सुप्रीम पर्सनलिटी ऑफ गॉड है इसलिए इनको जरूर मानिए उनको भूलने की वजह से हमारी ये दशा है कुछ अच्छे कर्म किए बस उसमें भोग रहे हैं अच्छा उस देर के बाद में फिर आप जानते हैं नेपोलियन बोनापार्ट को वो विश्व विजय करना चाहता था कुछ विजय भी किया और अंत में मित्र सेनाओं के साथ में ऐसे पड़ा समुद्र से बांध करके जेल में बंद करके और समुद्र में डुबा दिया हिटलर का तो आप लोग जानते ही हैं हमारे इतिहास में रावण को जानते हैं सोने की लंका एक लाख पुत्र सवा लाख नाती और विमान की जरूरत नहीं सर ही जह से जहां तहां चला जाए फिर न कसपू न दिन में मरे न रात में मरे और सब समय जुआ अवस्था वज्र जैसा शरीर हो मरण उसका ही नहीं है कहा गया वो सब एक क्षण के अंदर में हिरण कस्पू ने उसे इसलिए कल के लिए सोचिए आप लोग भी आप लोग ये मत समझिए जो सुखी हैं तो अभी ऐसा कोई नहीं होगा जिसको कोई न कोई रोग न हो और सबसे बड़ा ये रोग है जो बुढ़ापे की तरफ में हम बढ़ रहे हैं कल के लिए सोचिए परसों के लिए सोचिए तब बुद्धिमत्ता है यही हमारे भारतीय संस का ये संदेश है तमसार मां ज्योतिर्गम ये जगत में जो चल रहे हैं ये जो कुछ कर रहे हैं ये तमशांधकार है कहा जा रहे हैं कोई पता नहीं समझ रहे हैं कि यही सुख है किंतु ये सुख नहीं है भाई कुछ दिन के लिए क्षणिक सुख है कुछ क्षणिक समय के लिए ये सौंदर्य है ये बल है एक न एक दिन ये जाएगा इस पर खूब अच्छी तरह से विचार करके देखें इसलिए हम कल जीवन के अंत तक और जब ये जीवात्मा अमर अजर अमर है तो ये कैसे नित्य काल के लिए सुखी हो सकेगा इसके लिए विचार करना है यही परम बुद्धिमत्ता है भारत माने क्या भारत एक जमीन नहीं है भारत एक थ्योरी है एक विचारधारा है भारत भारतीय जितने भी शब्द हैं चाहे गुजराती हो बंगाली हो चाहे कोई भी हो संस्कृत संस्कृत से सब निकले हैं इसका कोई न कुछ अर्थ होता है भारत भा माने प्रकाश रत माने उसमें लगना भारत माने जहां पर ज्ञान का इतना विकास है आत्मज्ञान का भगवत तत्व ज्ञान का जो उसको जो छू देता है थोड़ा सा स्पर्श कर देता है अजर अमर हो जाता है इतना प्रकाश वो प्रकाश क्या है हम सब भगवान के नित्य दास हैं ईश्वर अंश जीव अविनाशी चेतन अमल सहज सुखराश 
संस्कृत में ममई मानसो जीव लोके जीव भूत ये गीता हमारे वेदों में ऐसा कहा गया नित्यो नित्यानाम चेतन चेतना नाम आनंदमय अभ्यास इत्यादि वेदांत सूत्र वेदों में कहा हम नित्य के संतान हैं हम प्रभु के संतान हैं हम उनको भूल करके जैसे पिता को भूल करके कोई इधर उधर भटक रहा ऐसे में अपने परम पिता परम गुरु परम सुहृद परम मित्र उनको हम भूल करके इस संसार में जन वर्ण में लगे हुए हैं इसलिए प्यारे भाइयों आप लोग भारतवासी विशेष कहेंगे इन चीजों को समझेंगे अपने घर का काम कीजिए खूब अच्छी तरह से कीजिए कोई भी बात नहीं के तो कुछ भगवत भाव मिलाकर के करेंगे नास्तिक नहीं ईश्वर नास्ती वेदा नास्ती ऐसा नहीं हम देखते नहीं है इसलिए मानेंगे नहीं कहाँ है भगवान कहाँ देखते हैं अरे तुम तो अपने भीतर में नहीं देख सकते आंखें तुम्हारी तुम्हारी आंखें तुम अपनी आंख को नहीं देख सकती और की तो बात क्या है ये आंखें बिना सूर्य के या किसी चीज के लाइट के ये नहीं देख सकती कोई भी चीज कुछ लेना पड़ेगा उसके सहायता से ये देखेगी ये क्या देखेगी और अंत में इसकी रोशनी नष्ट हो जाती है इसलिए इसे नहीं देखा जाए एक लोग एक आदमी ने हमारे गुरुजी से प्रश्न किया हम लोग ट्रेन सफर कर रहे थे गुरुजी के साथ में भगवान को कहा कोई देखा है जो आप लोग भगवान 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 कर रहे हैं ये तो सेंटिमेंटल लोगों ने भगवान शब्द की सृष्टि की है ये भग, हम लोगों ने सृष्टि की भगवान को भगवान ने हमको नहीं जितने डॉकोक आदमी थे एक मान लिया ये भगवान है ये सेंटिमेंटल भगवान कहाँ है कोई देखता है तुम तो गुरु जी ने कहा तुम जो देखता है वही मानता है अत हाँ हम तो वही मानेंगे और दूसरा कुछ नहीं मानते कह ये तुम सब मानता है तो कैसे अच्छा बताओ तुम्हारे पिताजी का नाम क्या है तो उन्होंने बुझा जी बोला बोला जी मेरे पिताजी का नाम राम मूर्ति या कुछ कहा अच्छा तुम ऐसा कोई प्रूफ दो जो तुमने देखा जैसे यही तुम्हारे पिता है कोई प्रूफ है इसका जो हमारे पिता वही है कोई कर सकता है हाथ उठा करके यदि मैया ने झूठ बोल दिया तो अरे तुम तो उसके बहुत दिन के बाद में मिन निकले उस समय माता पिता का जब संयोग से तुम पैदा हो जो बीच पड़ा उस समय तुम था इसलिए गलत बात है यह कहना मैया ने कहा मैया के बाद पे विश्वास करना पड़ेगा यहां वही तुम्हारे बाप है और यदि मैया ने गलत कह दिया तो माया मैया पर पर विश्वास नहीं हुआ तो फिर तुम्हारे क्या कहेंगे उसको <laughs> तो इसलिए कुछ ऐसी ट्रूथ है फंडामेंटल ट्रूथ जो फंडामेंटल है इसलिए इस विश्व का सृजन करने बनाने वाला सब कुछ ये कृष्ण है राम इत्यादि अलग नहीं है उन्हीं के एक भाव से उनको देखा जाता है उपासना के तारतम्य से ये सब चीजें इन आंखों से नहीं दिखेंगे इसके लिए गुरु की जरूरत है संसारी आदमी नहीं देख सकता उसके लिए थोड़ा सा प्रयत्न करें करना पड़े आप बतला सकते हैं कि यहाँ आग है कि नहीं बेटी यहाँ आग है तू बतला तो नहीं है ना आग है तुम्हारे पेट में भी आ गए शरीर में नहीं तो तुम हजम नहीं कर सकते अभी कोई चीज को लेकर के रगड़ देना आग निकल जाएगी यदि माचिस होगी तो तो ऐसा कर दो फिर अया वो क्या एक होता है ना देखा सर्वत्र आग है ऐसा कोई चीज नहीं है जहां आग नहीं है ऐसे ब्रह्म व्यापक है भगवान व्यापक है हम देख नहीं पाते अणु अणु में परमाणु में वो है वो हमारा सब कुछ जानता है मुझे नहीं जानता इसलिए भाइयों इस हमारे वैदिक शब्द में हमारे वेद उपनिषद गीता रामायण हमारी माताएं हैं माताएं झूठ बोल देंगी गीता भागवत रामायण ये झूठ कभी नहीं बोलेगा क्योंकि ये भगवान के मुखार के बिंद की बातें हैं ये तुलसी की रामायण मत समझा ये तुलसी दास जी ने लिख दिया क्या लिखा उन्होंने भगवान ने अपने ज्ञान की प्रेरणा दी और प्रेरणा देने से उन्होंने लिखा अपने उन्होंने नहीं 
उनके गुरु के माध्यम से वो ज्ञान है वाल्मीकि जी को नारद जी ने दिया नारद को कहां से ब्रह्मा से आया ब्रह्मा जी को किसने दिया स्वयं कृष्ण ने इस तरह से इन चीजों को समझना चाहिए इसलिए विचार करके और आगे देखिए कल क्या होगा अभी हमारे एक शिष्य इंग्लैंड में गए वहां पर करोड़ों रुपए उनके दैनिक आमदनी है उस बड़ी कंपनी के उन्होंने कहा कि इतना जो कमाते हैं आपके मरने के बाद में क्या होगा दोनों हाथ से पकड़ लिया शी मैंने कभी सोचा नहीं भाई मैं तो पागल हो गया मैं क्या करूं है? मरना तो जरूर पड़ेगा उस समय क्या होगा मैं कोई विचार ही नहीं पागल जैसे हो गए आप लोग ऐसा मत होएंगे पहले से विचार करके कीजिए इसलिए जब से ये ज्ञान है हुआ तभी से इस विषय का अनुसंधान करें जीवन में कैसे सुखी रह सकते जीवन में सुखी रहना एक कला है ये बिना बिन सत्संग न पा वही प्राणी बिना सत्संग के नहीं मिल सकता है अपने ज्ञान को सीमित समझेंगे यह ज्ञान ट्रांसडेंटल नहीं है लौकिक ज्ञान है इसका अभी पागल हो जाएंगे सब खत्म हो जाएगा इसका कोई भी मूल्य नहीं है आंखें हैं नहीं भी रह सकती हैं कोई अत्यंत सुंदर शरीर है हो सकता है कि वो लुंज पुंज हो जाए इसलिए भगवान पर विश्वास रखना चाहिए इसलिए भारत इसलिए भारत है ये दिव्य ज्ञान अलौकिक ज्ञान वहां पर है और वो कैसे है इतना सहज और सरल है कि जैसा आपका भाव है वैसे उनको सरेंडर कर दे प्रभु मैं तुम्हारा हूं आप मेरे हैं कुछ नहीं करना है मुसलमानों को दस बार उठना और बैठना पड़ता है नमाज पढ़ना पड़ता है परिश्रम है न किंतु हमारे यहां उठो बैठो भी मत जहां पलंग पर बैठो जैसे बैठो हो प्रभु का एक बार राम नाम कृष्ण नाम कर यदि हृदय से नहीं आता तो ऐसे भी कह दो इसकी प्राचीन उपाख्याने हैं हमारे वेदों में उपनिषदों में भागवत में अजामी कैसा ये ये हमारे वाल्मीकि जी कैसे और एक उल्टा नाम हुआ मरा कहने से अब देखिए हो गया राम राम इसलिए इसको साधारण चीज मत समझेंगे इसलिए सभी काम कीजिए सवेरे एक बार हाथ जोड़ करके प्रभु को हे प्रभु मैं आपको देख नहीं पाता बहुत अज्ञानी हूं आप मुझ पर कृपा करें बस इतना ही कहना है आप माला जो फेरेंगे यही भी कोई जरूरी नहीं है ये तो पीछे देखा जाएगा पहले ऐसे तो विश्वास तो कीजिए जो प्रभु हैं और हमको कंट्रोल करते हैं तो हमारे ऊपर बड़े दयालु हैं भगवान निराकार हैं ऐसा मत सोचेंगे वो नहीं दिखाई पड़ते हैं इसलिए ऐसा नहीं अरे क्रिश्चियनिटी में भी ऐसा है क्या गॉड क्रिएटेड मैन आफ्टर हिज ओन इमेज जब उनका अपना ही इमेज नहीं है तो कहां से क्रिएट करेंगे इन अल्लाह का खला का मेन सूरत ही उनके कुरान में भी ऐसे कुरान से इतना है क्या अपने सूरत के अनुसार उन्होंने बनाया इसको मनुष्य को ऐसा कोई नहीं किंतु उस थोड़े विचार नहीं कर पाते हमारे सनातन धर्म में वेदों में से लेकर के अब तक इसके ज्वलन सब उदाहरण और प्रमाण है इसलिए प्रभु पर ऊपर में विश्वास रखेंगे नास्तिक मत बनेंगे ये जगत ही सब सुख का कारण है ऐसा मत समझेंगे ये तो जीवन निर्वाह करने की एक कला है उसमें फंस न जाएंगे उनको स्मरण करेंगे बस हरे कृष्ण हरे कृष्ण 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 हरे हरे एक पैसा खर्च नहीं है कैसे कहे एक पैसा का भी कोई खर्च नहीं है एनर्जी भी नहीं जानी है कोई भी एनर्जी आपका समय नष्ट नहीं होगा आप कहें कि हमारा समय बर्बाद हो जाएगा तो आप लोग तो भारत के हैं तेली जानते हैं किसको कहते थे तेली जो तेल पेरते थे कल्हू लगा करके बैलों को ठोली लगा करके तेल पेरते थे तेल निकलता था आज जैसा घटिया तेल नहीं उस तेल को यहां पर थोड़ा सा रखने से ही आंसू आ जाते और इतना सुगंध है आजकल का घी भी उस तेल को आजकल तेल ही नहीं है तो तेल वो तेल पेरता था दिन भर हाट 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 उस पर बैठ करके और घुमाता था समय नहीं एक दिन नारद ने अरे भले मानुष 
तो दिन भर हाट हाट करता है बैल चला करके और तेल फेरता है अरे एक बार भगवान का नाम तो कर राम नाम तो कर क्या महाराज जी कहूँ मैं जानता हूँ कि अच्छी चीज है किंतु मैं कर नहीं पाता मुझे समय नहीं है जब मैं कस समय नहीं है तू खाता है तू टट्टी जाता है पेशाब करता है तुमको समय नहीं मिलता है तो उस समय करने से होगा तो जरूर होगा अच्छा तो आज मैं टट्टी करने के समय में जाऊंगा जंगल में उस समय में जरूर कर लूंगा तो बस समय तो और नहीं मिला टट्टी समय लोटा उठाया भारतीय जैसे कि बाथरूम जो होता है ना स्वाभाविक इंटरनेशनल इंटरनेशनल बाथरूम में हो गया <laughs> मैदान में और वहां पर टट्टी करते समय राम राम दो तीन बार किया किंतु एक नियम है जहां राम नाम होगा वो हनुमान जी जरूर पहुंच जाएंगे चाहे करोड़ों आदमी एक साथ टट्टी बैठे हैं या नाम इधर उधर कर रहे हैं रामायण घर सब जगह एक एक शरीर धारण करके वो पहुंच जाते हैं तो वहां भी पहुंच गए देखा ये तो बड़ा बदमाश तेली ये स्नान करके नहीं कर रहा है ये टट्टी करते हुए अपवित्र होकर के ये कर रहा है उन्होंने उठाया और एक लात जम करके दिया लात ऐसी दी जो कुंभकर्ण को लगते ही वो गिर गया और राउंड भी गिर गया दसों मुख में मट्टी भर गई वो गिर गया मेघनाथ गिर गए कोई बचा नहीं और ये तेली हरे कृष्ण हरे कृष्ण कहते हुए हरे राम 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 कहते हुए शौच किया और आराम के साथ में चला गया अच्छी जी क्या बात हुई इसको मैंने इतने जोर से मारा है ये इसको कुछ नहीं हुआ क्या बात हुई बहुत चिंतित रहे और आराम के साथ वो चला गया राम राम करता हुआ थोड़ी देर के बाद में जब शाम हुई तो राम ये हनुमान जी राम के दरबार में पहुंचे और वहां पर सेवा करने के लिए उपस्थित हुए जब वहां पर गए तो देखा आज आज राम कमर पर हाथ रखे हुए ओह आ ओह कर रहे हनुमान जी ने कहा जी प्रभु आज आपको क्या हो कह गया अब तो तुमने आज ऐसी जो जम करके हमारे पीठ की धुलाई की कि मेरे रीढ़ और पसली एक हो गई तो मैं प्रभु आपको मैं लाश से मारूंगा तो तुम नहीं तो कौन मारा अरे तेली जबकि मेरा नाम कर रहा था नाम और नामी दोनों एक है नाम और दयालु है मेरा स्वरूप ही नाम है अभी गधा कहने से गधा नहीं आ जाएगा किंतु राम कहने से कृष्ण कहने से साथ ही साथ वो कहा नहीं है इले जरूर आ जाते हैं तो मैं वहां झट जब उसने आराम किया और मैं पहुंच गया और तुमने जो लात मारी वो हमारे पीठ पर गई उसके पीठ पर गई इसलिए उसका कुछ नहीं हो किंतु हमारी तो पीठ एकदम ये हो गई रीढ़ भी टूट गई हनुमान जी बोले जी प्रभु आज से मैं कान पकड़ता हूं कभी कोई भी किसी अवस्था में भी भगवान का नाम करे मैं छेड़छाड़ नहीं करूंगा तो ये समझिए जो भगवान का नाम भगवान से भी दयालु है आप ऑफिस में हैं और कोई नहीं वहां पर है कर ले तो क्या हर्ज है ठीक है पलंग पर आए सोने जा रहे हो प्रसाद पा लिया हो सोने का समय है और उस समय क्या चिंता करेंगे ऑफिस में ये काम हुआ यहाँ पर यहाँ पर गड़बड़ी है यहाँ पर ये ठीक करना है वहां पर माल भेजना है यहाँ पर माल प्रोडक्ट करना है ये करना है वो करना है यदि वकील है तो तो सब जितने आपके क्लाइंट के क्लाइंट के जितने हैं फाइल आपके दिमाग में घूम रही है टीचर है तो और सब कुछ प्रॉब्लम घर में रसोई की कोई पत्नी है तो रसोई की ही चिंता हो रही है कल कहाँ से क्या चीज आएगा कैसे होगा क्या होगा और हमारे पति थोड़ा एक गर्लफ्रेंड रख लिया अब ये समस्या में क्या करूं वो कभी एक दूसरी औरत को प्यार करते हैं मैं सब कुछ सह सकती हूं ये नहीं सह सकती मैं तो किरासन तेल या कोई चीज डाल करके स्पीड में जल मरूंगी बड़ी भारी समस्या पति ने देखा जैसे आ रही ये तो बहुत प्यार ऊपर से करते हैं किंतु इसका एक बॉय फ्रेंड है देखने ऊपर से बस खूब लोग सुखी शांति से हैं किंतु ऐसा कोई है ही ये प्रॉब्लम नहीं किंतु उसी समय में ये सब प्रॉब्लम रह रहे एक बार कह दो तो बड़े प्यार के साथ में हरे कृष्ण हरे कृष्ण सो जाओ गोली की जरूरत नहीं पड़ेगी खाने के लिए 
ये चिंता नहीं करनी कि एक लड़की हमारी में शादी में हमने दस लाख रुपए खर्च किया और हमारी पांच लड़कियां रात में नींद आएगी नहीं आ सकती आजकल बहुत कसम कसम चल रहा है रसम कसम नौकरी नहीं मिलती भारत में तो नौकरी मिलना बड़ा बड़ी कठिन है इसलिए आप लोग इस धर्म में आ गए <laughs> आपके पूर्वज भी लोग भी इसीलिए आए मैं जानता हूं वहां के शहर में कलकत्ते में ही जितने आदमी हैं यह सारा फिजी मिल करके ही नहीं और सारा स्टेडियम मिल करके नहीं है इसलिए बड़ी समस्या थी इसलिए आप लोग छिटक फिटक करके हमसे ही धर्म में आ गए आप लोग छिट सक छिटक सकते हैं हम लोग नहीं छिटके हम जहां आप, आप लोग रहेंगे वहीं पर जाएंगे और आपको याद दिलाएंगे इसलिए हम भारत से यही संदेश लेकर के हैं चलते फिरते उठते बैठते जहां कहीं भी आपको समय मिल जाए प्रभु को नाम लेने में कोई एनर्जी नहीं लगती खर्च नहीं लगता पैसा नहीं लगता कुछ भी नहीं लगता हम आप लोगों से पैसा नहीं लेने आए ये समझ रखिए हम अपनी संपत्ति को ये ज्ञान आप लोगों को देने के लिए आए इसलिए जहां हम जाते हैं कह देते हैं भैया जब देखो हम स्कोन वाले नहीं आए स्कोन से नहीं स्कोन के गुरु जो थे वो हमारे गुरु जी के शिष्य थे हमारे प्रभुपाद जी के शिष्य थे किंतु अब ये लोग थोड़ा कुछ डिरेल्ड हो रहे हैं उनको पैसा चाहिए हम लोग पैसे के नहीं हम एक संपत्ति देने के लिए आए हैं उस संपत्ति का एक थोड़ा सा भी अंश आप लोगों को मिल जाएगा आपका जीवन धन्य हो जाएगा इसलिए हम आए इसलिए हम पर आप लोग विश्वास करेंगे क्योंकि मैं कुछ लेने के लिए नहीं आप लोगों का जीवन सुखी बनाने के लिए भारतीय संदेश देने के लिए आया मां तमसा ज्योतिर्गम है अंधकार की तरफ में मत जाओ ये अंधकार है ये सब मोह है मोह मोह से निकल करके ड्यूटी में आइए अपने पत्नी को देखिए ये भगवान की प्यारी है बट्टों को देखिए क्या ये भगवान के प्यारे हैं उनके अंश हैं मैं भी वही हूं इसलिए उनका सपोर्ट कीजिए पालन पोषण कीजिए उनको अच्छी तरह से ज्ञान में ले जाइए भगवत भक्ति उनको दीजिए ये आजकल की शिक्षाएं हमें कहा पतन में ले जा रही है आजकल देखते हैं कि सिगरेट पीते हैं वो ही हमारे प्रिंसिपल और प्रोफेसर और टीचर ही वो क्या शिक्षा देंगे उनका चरित्र ही नहीं अच्छा है वो क्या देंगे इसलिए ऐसी परंपराएं हैं इसमें संत लोग जो है जो भजन किए हैं उनकी बातों को मान करके थोड़ा सा चलिए यह राजनीति जब तक कि धर्मनीति के द्वारा संचालित नहीं होगी कंट्रोल नहीं होगी जगत का विनाश करेगी पहले ऐसा था राजनीति धर्मनीति के द्वारा शासित होती थी और सब जगत का कल्याण वो राम राज्य होता था तो आप लोग भी राम राज्य में रहिए राष्ट्र तो ऐसा नहीं हो सकता व्यक्तिगत हो सकते हैं इसलिए आज यही पर समाप्त करता हूं आज से हमारा प्रवचन होगा विष्णु मंदिर लटोका कोई विष्णु मंदिर लटोका में आप अनाउंस कर देंगे तो आप लोग आप लोग सभी लोग वहां पर जाएंगे हिंदी में बोलूंगा दरिया का मत मुझे प्रणामी अंत में आरती जब होगी तो प्रणामी एक एक पैसा या एक एक डॉलर दे नहीं नहीं कुछ नहीं देना पड़ेगा कोई डरने की जरूरत नहीं आप लोग आएंगे और स्वच्छंद हृदय से आएंगे इसको सुनेंगे अच्छा लगेगा तो आप लोग इसको पालन करेंगे नहीं अच्छा लगेगा तो कोई बात नहीं मैं अपना अपनी टोकरी भरी हुई फिर वृंदावन में ले जाऊंगा मैं सस्ते में बेचने की चेष्टा करूंगा किंतु यदि कोई आज का दूध नहीं बिकता है और घर घर में वहां दुकान पर मदिरा बिक जाता है लाइन लगी जाती है एकदम हमारे बच्चे आज इंडिया में भी कोको कोला सीख रहे हैं दूध नहीं पीते कोको कोला फेंक देंगे दूध फेंक देंगे दूध फेंक देंगे कोको कोला कहीं मैया से मांगेंगे तो वैसे ही आप लोग इस धारा में आइए भजन कीजिए अपने घर की चीजें आप ही के पास में रहेंगी आपका जीवन सुखमय हो उठेगा एक कीर्तन कर दो अद्वैताचार्य से देने के लिए आए थे आज उन्हीं का आविर्भाव तिथि है आज उनके चरणों में हम श्रद्धा पुष्पांजलि अर्पित करते हैं बोले श्री वृंदावन बिहारी लाल की कन्हैया
की बात बतलाता हूं एक पिता का बेटा बहुत गुड़ खाता था और उसके बड़े फोड़े फुंसी निकल आए थे सारे शरीर में फोड़े फुंसी बहुत कष्ट उस बेटे को होता था पिता बहुत तरह से समझाता था बेटा मैया समझाती थी जो तू गुड़ मत खा नहीं तो ये तुम मर जाएगा इतना कष्ट तुमको हो रहा है चारों तरफ में फोड़े फुंसिया होंगे नहीं माना वो तू अपने गुरु के पास में गए उस बेटे को ले गए गुरु जी आप तो सिद्धा महात्मा हैं आप जरा कह दीजिए हमारे बेटे को समझा दीजिए गुड़ न खाने तो ये स्पुत फाड़ फुंसी बहुत हो रहे हैं तो उन्होंने कुछ सोचा गुरु जी ने और कहा परसों ले आना तो परसों ले गए तो परसों उन्होंने बेटे से कहा समझा करके बेटे मीठा खाने से तुमको फोड़े फुंसिया हो रही हैं और बहुत कष्ट में है इसलिए तू आज से छोड़ देना मत खाना ठीक है तो उसने कहा जो ठीक और सचमुच में छोड़ दिया दो दिन दिन के बाद में वो ठीक होने लगा धीरे धीरे ठीक हो गया उसके पिताजी गुरु के पास में गए गुरु से कहा जी गुरु जी आप पहले दिन ही क्यों नहीं कह दिए जो दो दिन की देरी लगाई वो तो आप ठीक हो रहा है उन्होंने कहा कि देखो कहने से ही नहीं होता कहीं पढ़ने से ही नहीं होगा कैसे होगा उस दिन तक मैं गुड़ खाता था मिठाई खाता था इसलिए मैं खुद ही खाता हूं और फिर कहूं तहूंगा तो मेरी बात नहीं मानेगा बात कब मानेगा जब मैं जिसको प्रैक्टिस करता हूं उसमें सिद्ध हो चुका हूं इसलिए भगवान का नाम ट्रांसडेंटल नाम है पुस्तकों में पढ़ लिया वो भगवान का नाम नहीं होगा नहीं, नहीं होगा वो शब्द ब्रह्म नहीं है कहीं किसी ने ऐसे चलते कह दिया सुनिया राम राम अरे 
वाल्मीकि जी ने तो मरा मरा कहा देखो कैसे हो गए और हम लोग सीधा ही कहते हैं कहाँ हो रहा है मतलब क्या है कोई ऐसा सिद्ध हो जो इस नाम करके सिद्ध हो जिसको पक्का विश्वास है भगवान के नाम करने से हमारा सब कुछ सॉल्व हो जाएगा ये जगत के भी प्रॉब्लम साफ साफ सॉल्व हो जाएंगे पर जगत के भी और इसी से हम नित्य सुखी होंगे इसकी अनुभूति जिसने कर सका है उसके यहां से शुद्ध ब्रह्म शब्द ब्रह्म नाम लेना तब इसमें होगा यही रहस्य है नहीं तो जहां तहां जैसे तैसे गली में इधर उधर सुन लिया सिनेमा में सुन लिया रामायण अभी देख लिया अभी आप लोगों के सागर का रामायण आया था आपके यहाँ तो उसे कितने आदमी चेंज हुए हो सकता है कि सुनने के समय रो दिए हूँ चेंज कितने हुए ये होना मुश्किल है नारद जी ने अजामिल जैसे लोग को और उनको वाल्मीकि को सब कुछ चेंज कर दिया तो वैसे कोई सिद्ध हो हरिणाम शुद्ध करने वाले हों भगवान के चरणों में जिनका प्रेम हो भगवान का साक्षात नहीं करने वाले नहीं है तो करने वाले हों अभी योग्य बन रहे हैं ऐसे हों शुद्ध जब वहां पर सुनेंगे तो ये पुष्ट शब्द ब्रह्म आपके हृदय में है अभी हम लोग नाम करते हैं बीड़ी सिगरेट धुआं कसते हैं कोई मांस नहीं खाते हैं मांस मैंने क्या मांस मांग माने मुझे स खा दी वो खाएगा जिसे हम अभी खा रहे हैं अभी बकरी खा रहे हैं बकरी आपको खाएगी आप अभी मछली खा रहे हैं मछली भी आपको खाएंगी जरूर खाएंगी मीट एम ए टी एम ई मी इट जिसे हम अभी खा रहे हैं वो हमको मी हमको खाएगी ये समझिए ये पक्का सिद्धांत कोई उसे हमें रोक नहीं सकता इसलिए इन चीजों पर ध्यान रखते हुए ऐसे सदगुरु हों ऐसे लोगों की बात सुन करके वो आपका जगत का कुछ भी नहीं चाहेगा आपको चाहेगा ये देना चीज इसलिए समझ बुझ करके ऐसे तैसे राम राम कहने से भी नहीं होगा मन ना रंगायो रंगाए जोगी कपड़े केवल कपड़े रंगाने से तिलक और इससे गले में माला से नहीं होगा उसमें बहुत से ठग रावण ने त्रिदंड वेश हमारा जैसा संन्यास बनाया हम तो कपड़े भी पहने वो कपड़ा नहीं केवल रुद्राक्ष पहन करके दंड लेकर के ओ करा क्या भिक्षांग देही भिक्षांग देही और फिर क्या भिक्षांग देही नहीं देगी तुम्हारा तुम्हारा पति नष्ट हो जाएगा मर जाएगा यदि हमारे पास नहीं आए भिक्षा देने तो ऐसे ऐसे नहीं होगा सचमुच में जिसको रियलाइजेशन कुछ हो अनुभूति हो जिसके शब्दों में दम हो उससे लेकर के और सहायता लेकर के इसे गाइडेंस में हरी नाम के लिए थोड़े ही दिन भर करने की भी जरूरत नहीं है हो जाएगा इसलिए आज समय कितना एक बज गया है कभी आज यहीं पर मैं समाप्त करता हूँ यदि हमारी कोई कड़ी और रुखड़ी बातें हो गई हैं इफ आई हेट ऑल्सो हॉर्स यू कैन फॉर गिव मी उसके लिए मैं आप लोगों से क्षमा मांगता हूँ और यदि अच्छी कोई बात है तो आप लोग इसको ग्रहण कर सकते गौर प्रमा आप लोगों को प्रसाद सबकी व्यवस्था किए हैं शायद आप लोग प्रसाद पाइए और मुझे आदेश दीजिए मैं भी प्रसाद लेकर के वहाँ पर जाऊँगा ठीक गोविंद दामो
They're different than us. We have no relationship with them. 95% of them are fallen. And the most of them are against the more root of Sanat and Dharma. Oh, right. Start a revolution. <laughs> most of them are completely against this Sanat and Dharma because they're doing... They're neglecting the, the mul root of Sanat and Dharma, which is respecting the Vaishnavas. He says, but we are not relent, we are not dependent upon them. They are dependent upon us because they took birth from our parampara. Mm -hmm. <laughs> he says, but apart from that, we have the same dress, everything like that. But you should not think that we are this kind. Then Gurudev talked about, someone asked Gurudev a question that afternoon. What is Pravriti Marg? And what is Nivriti Marg? So Pravriti Marg generally means attachment to Samsa. And these people are called the Grihamedis. And then Nivriti Marg generally means that those who reject the Samsa and chase the Paramatic goal. But this Pravriti has two, this Pravriti Marg, or this tendency towards sense enjoyment, has two classifications. One is those, they have all, are the people who may have all good qualities, but they have no Atma Dharma, no Sanat Dharma, no interest in them, Paramatic goals. So these examples like Yadyati Maharaj, Harish Chandra Maharaj, they might have all the good material qualities, but they have no spiritual life. But the second group of this Praviti Marg is householder devotees like Maharaj Janak, Ambarish Maharaj, Bharat Maharaj, Sukh. Uh, Yudhisthira Maharaj, like that. And then the Navriti Marg also has two divisions. One is the impersonalist headed by Astavakra, Sankacharya, and his disciples and sannyasis. And their goal is towards moksha. But the second group of Navriti Marg people is, the, is renowned saints like Narad Muni, Sanat Sananan Sunat Kumar, the Sukadev Goswami, and these are the old Paramahamsas and they're all devotees. So he said he talked about Yadadi Maharaj, for example. He was cursed. He married the daughter of, of Sukracharya, didn't he? Then he became attached to another girl. And Sukracharya was so angry, he cursed him, to, cursed him to become an old man. He said, but there's one condition. If you can find someone to swap your old, your old age with, then you can enjoy. So he did. He, Yadadi Maharaj had so many sons. And the, el the youngest son, wasn't it? Yeah, thanks. The youngest son... He said yes, the, young, the youngest son, he took his father's old age and gave him his youth. And then he joy, enjoyed for thousands of years with the Urvasi, one prostitute, heavenly prostitute. And the end of his time, he lamented, if one puts more gear into the fire, does it become small? No. So by enjoying material sense enjoyment, does your desires become less? So no. So after this, So after this, he got some gyan. By the mercy, I think it was Narada Muni, then he started his bhajan. And he said, everyone must leave their household at 50 years of age and take towards spiritual life. And these days, we see that many people are eating meat and alcohol, but this is all sinful activity. But there are certain, certain, um, certain prescribed methods that one can undertake if one wants to enjoy meat and alcohol. For example, he has to offer the goat in this black goat on the full dark moon yeah. at a certain time of sacrifice. He has to do so many, so many rules and regulations. Then he can take these things. But if he's just thinking, you know, eat here, drink there, you know, ha ha, he, he, no rules and regulations. This is all sinful activity. So the ultimate goal of this Pravriti Marg is not just to enjoy, but it's to enter the Vriti Marg. And Guru have washed his hands of all that, then he started his Pravachana. <laughs> He said, so Ramachandra Bhagavan, he is Majjata Purusottam. He said, he is bound by the rules and regulations of Shastra. He says, and also he is bound, also his devotees are also bound by these rules. And they never overstep these bounds. Because still we know that Ramachandra, he is Bhagavan, he is completely independent. He can do as he likes. But in, in order to show the example of the perfect king, of the perfect brother, of the perfect wife, perfect husband, the perfect bhakta, then all his devotees followed these Majjara Purushottam, these, these boundaries of Majjara. But Krishna is different. He said, he is Lila Purushottam. He is the Lila Purushottam, the enjoyer of all Lila. So, he has no Majjara. He has no rules and regulations. He has only prema, his Majjara is Prema Bhakti. <laughs> he says, by Gyan we can know that by drinking our thirst we will go. 
but by actually drinking the water we can experience how thirst goes. So by Gyan no, we satisfy, but actually by performing bhakti we can understand how happiness will come. So Krishna's prem is not checked by these rules of these rules of Marjana, and nor is his devotee's prem. Ram has no suckers. Ram never plays the flute. Ram never dances. Ram never does rasa. So he's, he is checked by the rules and regulations, but Krishna is not checked. He is completely free. For example, in Vrindavan, Krishna is sleeping on his cot, and the suckers come in, and they jump on him, and they rub, they rub, they wrestle with him, they pull his ears, they shake him like this. They say, "Oh, Sally." Sally means like it's it's almost like an insulting term, which means like my brother-in-law. Like you're married to my daughter, that means I'm elderly. So, right. Oh, sorry, you're still I'm sleeping, you're sister. still sleeping. So they're wrestling more like him. He says, but can Hanuman come and do this to Ram in the morning? No, it's completely impossible. Ram Chandra would never stand it, and neither can Hanuman also cannot do. So Krishna is hungry for this prem, and the Bhakti is also hungry for this prem. So in the pastime, then he told the pastime of Krishna and Sri Sakho wrestling. How Krishna threw, Sri Dhamma threw Krishna on the ground and sat on his chest and said, Now you've been defeated. And Krishna was laughing and Sri Dhamma was a bit angry. He said, Why are you laughing? I have, been, I have defeated you. He said, No, no. He said, In society, that person whose nose is up, he is the victor. He said, So my nose is up and your nose is down. So Guru was laughing. He said, So this is, so in the leader of Krishna, this Majada has been kicked like a football so many miles away. That was the exact time we go. And what to speak of the Sakas is that Krishna himself is taking the Gopi's feet upon his, upon his lap and massaging them with his own until he's wiping their faces, saying, Naparihaam Nedavidju Samyajam. He's saying that, I promised that I would repay your prayer, but I cannot do it. So Krishna is weeping, saying, I am indebted to you. He said, why Krishna is indebted? Because the Gopi prayer is a kanda, it's completely undivided. He says, all their energy is given to only one source, to Krishna. And they left everything for Krishna. They left their husbands, they left their wives, they left their children, they left their homes, they left all Vedic rules and regulations, they left all future possibilities for happiness, just for the chance to serve Krishna. He says, so their prem is a kanda, but Krishna has never left anyone for the gopis. So his prem is not a kanda, so this is why he is indebted. He says, what to speak of the gopis, even someone like Rukmini. Rukmini has... <coughs> Rukmini has... Ten bo- Rukmini and all these 16,108 white queens of Dwarka, Devash, what's it, Devashis? They each had ten boys and one girl, and as each child was born, Rukmini's prem is divided between Krishna and the child, Krishna and the two child, so each child that's being born, the percentage of prem that goes towards Krishna is cut. It's been cut. So her, even what you speak of Krishna, even Rukmini's prem is a kanda. It says, and the Rukmini has never left, she cannot leave her children, <coughs> cannot leave her husband, cannot leave anything like the Gopis have for Krishna. What does the kind of name exactly? Undivided. Kanda means divided. So Rukmini's. Is her Kanda. prem is also Kanda, divided. Um. Then Subhanandu who spoke, but we've heard that past time. So before, we've got a few classes to go through. So, this is last night's class. So, someone asked Gurudev two questions last night. Sit here. Okay. <laughs> Gurudev, someone asked Gurudev two questions on a piece of paper. So Gurudev spent half the class answering. Uh, so someone asked, that what is the qualification for a Brahmin? Someone asked, what is the qualification for a Brahmin? And the second question was, which side, if the husband is performing Jagya, where should the wife sit? It's a pretty foolish question. Remember, <laughs> someone asked them. So Krishna quoted, quoted the Bhagavad Gita, Guna Karma, Chatur Vanam, something, something, Mayashristam. Krishna says, I myself have established these four Vanas and four ashrams. They said, and so Guru started off by saying, in Satya Yuga, there is only one. Ash, there's only one caste. You know, there's Sudra, Vaisha, Chaturas, 
Brahman, the four divisions of humans, according to their adhikar, according to their tendencies. So the Sudra will be tending to serve everyone else, the Vaishya will tend to do business, the Chacha will tend to defend Dharma, engage in disciplining others. <laughs> and the Brahmana, he will be tend to study spiritual life, engage himself in spiritual life. So Guru says, in such a yuga there was only one Vana. There was only one Vana. Everyone was a Paramahamsa. <laughs> Everyone was a topmost devotee. So there was no much difficulty in such a yuga. But as the yugas progressed, then these four other Vanas became established. So in Treta Yuga, the next yuga, those four were established. And he said, who is a Brahmana? Guru says, it's not simply that someone is born whose father was a Brahmana. And he's born in that family, father, in that family, does not make him a Brahmana. He says, for instance, one day one boy, he went to Gautam Rishi. And he said, oh Gurudev, please initiate me, I want to become a Brahman. And Gautam Rishi said, what is your culture, what is your family line? Where is your family coming from? Who is your father? Like this. The boy said, I do not know. So the Rishi said, go and ask your mother. So the boy went and asked his mother. And he came back to the Rishi. And the Rishi said, did you ask who is your father? And he said, yes. He said, my mother told me to say one thing. He says, he said to say, the boy said, my mother's name is Yuvala. And that's all I can say about my parenthood. Because my mother, when in her youth, she was a prostitute. And she used to know many, 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 many different men. So I cannot, she cannot say who exactly is my father. <laughs> so this boy told that to the Rishi, Golden Rishi. And Golden Rishi became so surprised, he took that boy on his lap, and shedding tears, he said, he says, you must be a Brahmana. He says, because only a Brahmana could tell such an unpalatable truth. <laughs> so you must be a Brahmana. So he merely gave him a sacred thread and initiated him into a Brahmana. So then Gurudev quoted a shlok from the... Whoever, then Gurudev quoted a shlok from the Mahabharata. That even if one takes birth in a Sudra family, but he exhibits the qualities of a Brahmana, then he is a Brahmana. And then Gurudev gave, for example, that Ravan, his father's name was Rishabha, and he was a Brahman. And he had many, many sons, but Ravan, he was a Rakshasa, which means he's even lower than a Sudra. So that even though his father was a Brahman, does not make, mean that Ravan was a Brahman. And he gave many examples of many different Rishis. And there's one Rishi called Singhi Rishi, and his mother was a deer. <laughs> she said, what is his caste? <laughs> well, who, you know, is his father a, Bra a Brahman, a Vaishya, a Sudha? Who can tell us that this is immaterial? But he's a great famous Rishi. He used to do many, many Vedic sacrifices for the demigods. He used to read the, the Veda, give classes. So he was, of course, he was a topmost Brahmana. So, but his mother was a deer, so we cannot trace... What's his name? Shingi or Shringi? Shringi Rishi. I think Shringi. Shringi Rishi. He said, and Narada Muni... He's more than a Brahman, he's a topmost Paramahamsa devotee. He said, but his mother was a, a cleaning woman, a Sudrani. And then Vishwamitra, he's, he was born in a pot, <laughs> an earthen pot. So he said, so who, what was his caste? Who was his mother and father? Who can tell this such a thing? But Vishw, Vishwamitra was a, Parama, a, Parama, a very great Brahma Rishi, a very great saint, so topmost Brahman. And Valmiki Guru said this morning that the termites eat the wood and they pass the stool from their body and that becomes a termite mound. And they mix it with dirt and it becomes a termite mound. So he was born from a termite hill. So, so who is his mother and father? <laughs> so, so these things are, we cannot trace someone's, whether they're Brahman or Vaishya or Sudra or Chatri, simply by their family. No, you cannot do. You have to look at their qualities and you have to look at what sort of work they do. Guru Karma. I said in Vyas, Vashishta, he was born from a prostitute, a heavenly prostitute. So, and, But he was topmost class of Rishi. And Vyasadev, he was born from a, a girl who was a fish. In her last life she was a fish. Her name was Mansi Ganda. So what is his caste? Is it, but Vyasadev was such a person, he's the guru of all the Brahmanas. He was the one who wrote all the Vedas. So it's obvious he's a Brahman, more than a Brahman. So then he quoted another shloka, which I'd like to get down. So it's a fact that by birth, everyone is born a Sudra. And there's one verse in the Bhagavatam, I'm good at being quoted, but it's Kalo Sudra 
Kalo Sudra Bhav Sambhava. Then in Kali Yuga, everyone is born a Sudra. There's no such thing as a Brahman in Kali Yuga. Everyone is a Sudra. So, it, then Guru quoted that verse from Mahabharata, everyone is born a Sudra. No, it's from the Tulsi, Tulsi Das Ramayana. Everyone's born a Sudra, but some of those boys, <coughs> they're given the sacred thread and given mantra. So they're called Vipra. It's twice born. Do we do Vipra? It says, but there's a difference. And one who, after initiation, he reads the Vedic scriptures, so he's called a Vipra. But there's a difference even between a Vipra and a Brahmana. So a Vipra is someone who has a sacred thread who might be engaged in sacrifice, who might be engaged in reading the Vedas. But unless he knows Brahmana, unless he knows Param Brahma, God, then he's not really a Brahman. Brahmana, he always quotes the verse, Brahmana, something, iti, Brahmana. That a real Brahman understands. Brahma Janiti Brahmana. Janiti, Brahman. Brahman. Janiti, that's right. One who knows Brahma, Brahma Janiti, God, Brahman. is a Brahmana. And he gave an example like Rishad Dev, he's an incarnation of God. And he's a Chachira. And he had a hundred sons. And out of those hundred sons, 81 were Brahmanas, including the Navanagendra Rishis. And nine of them were Chachiras. So Krishna's established his Vanashram to get some control in society that everyone can be slow to be... If they're a Sudra, they can be elevated. If they're a Chachra, they can be elevated. If they're a, Ch a Vaishya, they can be elevated. If they're Brahmana, what to speak of a Brahmana, they can also become elevated to becoming devotees of Krishna. Then he quoted that the meaning of a Sudra is that someone who wants happiness of their own body, they're called a Sudra. So one time Srila Gauguman, she asked one of his disciples, what, what are you? What is your uh, what is your vana? Hmm. And the disciple said, I am a sudra. And Gorgon was chastised and said, Oh, you're a sudra? You've taken initiation from Guru? And you're still a sudra and you blasted him. You have no faith in Guru. So then Guru had cut out. He, then he went, then he was very happy to finish all that subject. Then he went about this, which side does the wife sit on at the yoga? He says, Guru says, I'm not so much interested in this, I'm a sannyasi. <laughs> <laughs> you really want to know, you've asked me the question. He says, All I know, and then he quoted the shloka. One shloka about Sita Ram, Sita is always situated on the left hand side of Ram. And he quoted another shloka that when Ram did the sacrifice in a, at um, Nadasaranya, that time Sita was situated, the gold statue of Sita was situated on his left hand side. So he really quickly washed his hand of that yeah. subject and went on to the, the Bhagavatam. This was all Subhananda, wasn't it? No. Isn't there something about meat eating, though, in that class last night? MEA, just the same. Every class, every class. Okay, then Subhananda Guru spoke nicely. And I could have spoke a bit, then Subhananda Guru spoke. So Prichit Maharaj, when he was in the womb of his mother, that time Aspatama tried to kill the whole race of the Purus. Kurus and... What's that on? Kurus and... Yadus. 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 He tried to destroy the whole Yadu race. So he cast a Brahmastra weapon which is like a, it's like a bit like a nuclear bomb, but it's done by mantra. So that last of the race was inside, what's the name of the woman? Uttara. Uttara. It was in, he was a baby inside his mother's womb, and he was the last of the race. So that Brahmastra weapon went inside the womb to kill him. And he became afraid and he prayed to God. And that time a four-armed form of Vishnu appeared in the womb. And, and the womb was burned to death, but immediately by the grace of Vishnu, that womb came again and the child was completely protected. So he saw the beautiful form of Krishna in the womb, and that's why he's called Pariksha, because after he spent the whole rest of his life looking like this. Looking like this. Is this him? Is that him? Looking for that beautiful Vishnu. Mm -hmm. Pariksha so, means examiner. The examiner. So Pariksha means examiner because he was always looking at everyone. Where is that person gone again? I want to see his beautiful form. So Pariksha was cursed to die. Good have told the story. It's a long story. He was cursed to die in seven days, and that time he was very happy. He said, oh, I was looking for a chance to do bhajan, but I had so many responsibilities. So he couldn't find a chance, but now I've got a chance. So very happily, he put down his crown, he put off his armor, put down his sword, and just walked out of his palace and went to the bank of the Ganga. And immediately 88,000 rishis came there, like Mongol rishi. And he said, "That Mongol rishi is what Mongol is named after. Good mm -hmm. last night. And Kasyap rishi is what the Caspian Sea is named after. So all these different parts, and then Malaysia and Singapore. Anyway, he went through it. So all these 88,000 rishis came. Like this, no telephone, no fax, they came on. No email. He didn't say that again. 
So then, he's, then Prince Maharaj was thinking, if Ramani was about to die, what should he do? At the time, Sukhadev Goswami came and spoke to Bhagavatam. Then, Subhananda Gurudev asked Subhananda Guru to speak on the, the, the teachings of Lord Kapila Dev. Kapila Devahuti Sambhan. Hmm. Teachings of Lord Kapila Dev. So Kadam, Bhagavan made a deal with Kadam Rishi. He says, after he did many, I don't know the whole story, he made many austerities and Bhagavan said, I will become your son. So this Rishi, he married Devahuti. And that he was about to take sannyas and leave the house and the wife prayed to him, oh, Prabhu, he says, don't leave me alone, at least give me one son. So by the mercy of the, the son, Kadam Rishi, she got a son and that son happened to be God. <laughs> What's his name? Kapila Dev. And so, the wife was very unhappy and she begged her son, please give me some instructions. So this instruction is called Devahuti Kapila Dev Sambhad, the teachings of Lord Kapila Dev. So there's many, many shlokas and one is Satam Prasangam Manamavir Divan Mamavir Jusambhava Bhavanti Redkana Rasaya Nakata Tadyosa Narasvara Vavago Vatmini Shraddha Rati Bhakti Anukra Misyati Satam Prasangam, Satam means sadhu, or that sadhu is a sp established in spiritual existence. Satam Prasangam, Manamavi, Jasamado. Kapila Deva is saying, go to that sadhu who is self realized, who is a God realized soul. And you should hear from him what? Vidya Samvido, the heroic pastimes of Krishna. Bhavanti Ritkana Rasayana Kata. And that Rasayana Kata, which is like a very, very sweet medicine, you should hear how Bhavanti Ritkana through the ears, drink it through the ears. Not through your mouth. <laughs> Drink this nectar through your ears. Tadyosana Svarvago Vatmini Sradha Rati Bhakti Anukramasiti. And by hearing this Harikata, what will happen? It says you'll develop first Shraddha, which means faith in Krishna. Shraddha Rati Rati. And then your faith develops more and more thick, then you'll develop the primary stage of ecstatic love of Godhead. And then that, that, that primary stage of ecstatic love of Godhead called Rati, that will mature into Prem. So, he's giving instructions, he's saying that you should go and do sadhusanga and hear Harikata and then you'll develop the summum bonum of life. And he said, but there's three types of devotion. One is called tamasic bhakti. That's someone they're doing devotion to Krishna, but their goal is to hurt others. I, I, he didn't give so many examples, but that's called tamasic bhakti. The person himself is under the mode of tamas, or ignorance. So he's doing bhakti so he cannot do pure bhakti because he's in ignorance. <laughs> so this is called tamasic bhakti. And he's doing that goal, but he's doing that bhakti, but as the fruit of that he will hurt others in his worship. He'll speak harsh words, insult people. This is called tamasic bhakti. But higher than that is a rajasic bhakti, that someone's left the mode of tamas and he's come and he's influenced by the mood of rajagun. So he'll be doing all bhakti but for self-gain. Oh Krishna, give me this. Oh God, give us this daya daily bread. Give me this, give me this. So he's doing bhakti, but it's a business deal. He's only wanting his own self-interest. And higher than this is sattvic bhakti. Bhakti done in the mode of goodness. And this bhakti means he's wanting mukti. He's trying to get mukti as a result. But higher than all these three is called nirgun bhakti, which is called pure devotional service or <coughs> suda bhakti. And from this he only wants one thing, to give happiness to Krishna. Nirgun bhakti. That mangu, mangu, then another verse he said, Madguna, madguna Shuti Mantrena Mai Sarva Guhase Manugatiya Bhikshina Gangambu Salambudo. Oh mother, my devotees, Madguna Shuti Mantrena, as soon as I hear my glories, Shuti means to hear, mat, as soon as I hear my glories, I, Sarva Guhase, who is I, Krishna, who is situated in the heart of everyone, Manugatiya Bhikshina, that their mind flows unrestrictedly towards me. Just like the Ganga flies unrestrictedly, unrestrictedly towards the ocean. As soon as my devotees hear my Nam, Guna, Rupa, Lila, that their minds immediately merge with me. They immediately fly to me unrestrictedly, <coughs> like the Ganga flies towards the ocean. Then you see there's different types of sadhana. There's Gyan sadhana, by the worship of the Nivashesh Brahma. Brahma will attempt to merge with Brahman. This is called Gyan sadhana. This is, but this is painful, it's so painful, it's such a painful process and the result is not so great because from that position of Nivashesh Brahman realization one will fall down again into the material pool. But 
And then another type is called karma sadhana, sat, sat karma sadhana, that he has desire to go to swag and to enjoy the heavenly planets for millions of years. He'll give charity, build hospitals, do many, many fire sacrifices, only for the desire to rise up to the planets of the demigods and enjoy like anything. But higher than this, oh yeah, and if he does very, very good activities, he might reach up to Chandralok, the planet of the moon god. But if he does very, very good activities, he might even go to Swagat heaven. But when their pious activities run out again, they'll fall. So this is also a painful thing. And then he described at the time of death, he says one will be lying on his cot, and there will be many, many friends, <coughs> all his friends, all his family, all his wife and children, they'll all be around him, and they'll all be crying, crying, lamenting, oh my dear husband, my dear husband. And that time, he'll be trying to speak, He's, he'll be trying to give them instructions. He'll be so worried. He'll be trying to calm him, trying to speak his heart. But that time, death has caught him, and his voice chokes up. His voice becomes covered with phlegm. He starts <coughs> to pass urine and stool in his body, and his body begins to burn 107, 108 degrees. It's called Vishnu Dwada, the fever of Vishnu. In that time, he's in a pain like there's a million scorpions biting him. Gorgon wants you to say, do you know what is one scorpion bite? He goes, bring one scorpion and give to him. <laughs> he says, and then that pain is multiplied thousands of times. That's the pain of the time of death. And he's crying, crying, crying. But what happens? The three, the carriers of Yama, Yama do to come. The carriers of the message of death, they come and grab that sinful man, take him from his body and bring him down for punishment. <laughs> but that time he's crying, but he cannot express any of this to anyone. And they take him down there to, to burn him. So whatever sinful activities he's performed, he'll have to suffer that reaction to the letter. To the letter. He cannot escape. Whatever he's done, he'll have to suffer. So after suffering there for thousands of th countless thousands and thousands of lives, that soul again gets elevated. It goes again through the animal species, doesn't it? Well, yeah. yeah. It goes again from the very bottom, works its way up through the 8,400,000 species. Then that soul enters into the rainfall, and that rain falls, and the soul is in the rain, and it enters into the, it enters into the seeds. And according to the will of the Bhagavan, then different animals eat the seeds. Fruit ever seen this? Supernatural. And then from the seed he gets put into semen, and then he's injected into the womb of the mother. But he said one interesting thing. Then the, the baby is there in the womb, suffering like anything. It's up. It's described in the Bible time. He's upside down. He's crushed into a ball. It says, and his, the mother's stomach is so hot. He's burning, burning. There's millions of worms chewing on his skin. <laughs> and the mother drinks any alcohol, smokes cigarettes, or eats chilies. Kava drinks kava. That time the, the mother's body, the baby's body is burning, burning because he's so soft. And he's suffering so much. <clears throat> he says, but those souls who've done bhajan in their past life. They pray, Oh my Lord, save me, save me, save me. And only those people who have done bhakti, they can remember God in the time in their womb. Mm -hmm. Those people who have never done bhakti, they can't remember. Yeah. That time the baby in the womb please, Oh Lord, I forgot your budget last life, but this life I promise I'll do it. Sneak preview, Lord. Things to come. But as soon as he's born, what happens? Maya catches him and he forgets mm -hmm. everything. He forgets all these big promises. But those people who have done bhakti in their past life, and the womb they can remember Bhagavan, as soon as they're born, they're born into a pious atmosphere. And they can get satisfied. Like Gurudev said this morning, Gurudev was saying, she says, like me, says, my father was a pure devotee. And from the very moment of birth, I was always hearing Ram Nam, Ram Kata, I was always going to my house. Oh, that was funny. Good it was him and Ram until Ram took it to Krishna. <laughs> yeah. So Bhakti, then he said, Srila Bhakti, the Kaur is praying. I may get any birth, no harm. He says, I don't mind if I'm born as an insect, as a grasshopper. He says, but I have one condition. He says, at least let me be born as an insect in the house of your devotee. <laughs> That's the only thing I want. Even if I'm an insect, let me be born where your devotee is always chanting the name, form and leela of Krishna. And I can get some sort of son. So by the worship of the devatas, no real result can come. He cannot get relief from his suffering. He cannot get relief from his samsa. But just like if one gives water to the roots of a tree, the whole tree is satisfied. But it gives water to all the different leaves and fruits and twigs and branches, then the tree will die. So if you give water to the root of the tree, the whole tree will nourish and bloom. So just like 
just give your all your attention and energies to Krishna, all your love and affection to Krishna, then everything will be reconciled, everything will be nourished. And then Gurudev said, don't think these Yamadudas are a myth. Don't think they're just stories. He says, the Padam you can be completely sure of this thing. And then Gurudev said, come with me to Vrindavan. So he left the mother's womb, burning there in the pits of hell, and <coughs> come to Vrindavan. He said, what is the meaning of Sukha? Because Bhagavatam starts with Sri Sukha Uvacha. Sukha means parrot and Sri means Radharani. So who is Sukadev Goswami? In his previous life, <coughs> he was the parrot of Srimadhi Radharani. And he used to sit on Radharani's hand and she used to stroke him and pat him. And with her own hand she would feed him sweet rice and pomegranate seeds and say, and she used to teach him to chant, chant Krishna, 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 Krishna. And Radharani's voice is so sweet, and Sukadev, he learned to chant her in exact imitation of her voice. Krishna, Krishna, Krishna. So one day the parrot flew off, and he went to Nandagaon, where Krishna lives. It's just like this close, where Radharani lives and Krishna lives. Vashana and Nandagaon, very, very close. So the parrot, Krishna says that the parrot, was, he flew off to Nandagaon, and he was sitting in the tree. And Krishna was underneath that tree <coughs> with his friends. And that parrot was lamenting, goes, alas for me, alas for me, he says, my caste of parrots is so restless. Our parampara of parrots is very restless parampara. We're always moving here and there. He goes, curse my restless nature, which made me leave right around his hand. Alas on me, alas on me. So he was lamenting, and then he was also chanting Krishna, Krishna, because that's what he'd been taught to say. And he was saying exactly like Sri Mata Radharani, so beautiful. So he's saying, chanting, Krishna, Krishna, alas on me, why don't I leave Radharani, fire on me, fire on my births of parrot. Krishna, Krishna, so he's done like this. And Krishna heard the beautiful voice of the parrot, just like Radharani's voice, so his heart melted. So he started looking, where is Radhika, where is Radhika? And he couldn't see Radhika, he looked up and he saw one nice parrot on the tree. So Krishna went, come on, come on, call the parrot. He says, it's not difficult for Krishna to attract the parrot. He's Madan Mohan. He says, Krishna calls it, he is so beautiful that he attracts all living entities. What to speak of living entities, when even the stones and the rivers and the trees see him, they melt. The stones <coughs> melt, the river runs backwards, the trees, the trees faint, all their fruits fall off. The peacocks, when they see him, they're dancing. And when Krishna, then when Krishna plays his flute, all the sweetness of himself is put into the sound vibration. The peacocks, when they hear that flute, they start dancing like mad. And all the calves, they stop drinking their milk, and the milk, they cannot swallow the milk, and the milk simply runs down their chin. It's hearing the beautiful flute sound of Krishna. And the cows, that, their ears go like this, like big funnels, like cups, and they, so all the nectar goes into that, into their ears, and they become completely stunned. And they have mouths full of grass, but they cannot swallow the grass, it stays in the mouth like that, and they're drinking the nectar of the flute. So it's not, it's not very hard for Krishna to attract a parrot, he just goes, come on, come on, and so the parrot came down. The parrot was saying, I'm so, alas, why did I leave Radha And Krishna said, don't worry about that, now you're with me. So he started, he also started loving the parrot, feeding it pomegranate seeds, feeding it milk. And, when, and the leader Visaka came looking for their parrot, and they saw the parrot with Krishna. They said, hey, give it, that's Radhika's parrot, that's the parrot of Aswamini. Give it back, give it back. Krishna said, no, no, he says, this is Brindavan, no one is here by force. He said, if you can attract the parrot, if he goes with you freely, then I have no objection. So if he can go if he wants, but of course the parrot is so attracted with Krishna, how will it leave him? So the parrot didn't leave. And Lita and Vishaka are very angry. You better give that parrot back because it's not ours. He says, you're always stealing everything. You're stealing butter, you're stealing clothes, you're stealing mines, and now you're also stealing our parrot. This is too much of an injustice. So they went to Yasodama and they complained to Krishna's mother, Krishna's stolen our parrot, please make him give it back. So Lita and Vishaka, they came with Mother Yasoda. And Mother Yasoda said, you naughty boy, and she grabbed the parrot like this and twisted his ear. <laughs> he said, I've been calling you for dinner, but you haven't come. He says, you spend so much time with these animals that you actually become like an animal. Mm -hmm. He says, Baba is returning from milking, and you haven't taken bath, you're not there to greet him, you're just here with your friends laughing and joking and playing with the animals. So you sort of took the parrot, got it back to the lady of Shaka, and then she twisted his arm and pulled him back to the father. So at the end of the pastimes in Vrindavan, Radha and Krishna said, O Sukadev, you stay here. 
He says, because only you are qualified to manifest the Srimad Bhagavatam. Only you know Krishna Lila. He says, so if you stay here and narrate Srimad Bhagavatam, this will be the real service to us. So then they left and Sukadeva was left all alone. And he was very sad. Because he's, no Krishna, no Radha Krishna. So he was always anxious, where is Harikata? So wherever there's Harikata, he used to fly there and here. <clears throat> so one time, Shivaji, he was in Kailash, and he was speaking, actually God wants to say he was in Bhubaneshwar. Mm -hmm. Bhubaneshwar is the second Kasi, the second resting place of Kasi. So he was there speaking the Bhagavatam to his wife, and his wife was there and she was thinking, there's 12 candles of the Bhagavatam, the 10th candle is where Krishna Lila spoke, and the wife was thinking, first candle, I have to go through all this, Lord Brahma creates the universe, the creation of material elements. So she became tired and she fell asleep, you know. And Sukadev, and Shivaji was, was, had his eyes closed, he was absorbed in the Bhagavatam, and he was saying, so, he goes, did you hear that, did you hear that? And the parrot in the tree was going, yes, huh, very good, huh, yes, nectar, continue on. Oh, very good point, very good point. <coughs> so, 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 with the same voice. With the same voice as, his, as Parvati. Mm -hmm. So, Shivaji was thinking, he, he didn't know his wife was asleep, he was absorbed in Samadhi. So he just heard the parrot's voice going, yes, yes, oh, very nice, yes, continue on, continue on. So he spoke the whole Bhagavatam, then he opened up his eyes and he saw his wife was asleep. And he became, what? He goes, she's asleep. He goes, but who's been saying, yes, yes, very good, nice point, oh, yes, very good idea. And he was looking around, looking around, and he saw in the tree one parrot, and he became furious. He goes, you rascal. He goes, no, no unqualified person should hear the Bhagavatam. So he took up his trestle, his three-pronged pitchfork, and he went after the bird as I'm going to kill you. And the bird flew away and Sukhita and Shivaji was chasing him with a tree saw. And meanwhile Vyasadeva was in Badrik Ashram speaking Harikachar to his wife called Bitaji. And his wife was stunned by hearing the beautiful Bhagavatam. Her mouth was open like this. And Sukhita Goswami flew into her mouth. And Shivaji meanwhile came with his tree saw looking here and there. Where's that bird gone? He said, oh Vyasadeva, have you seen one bird here? And Vyasadeva laughed, Oh, Shivaji, Om oh, Maha, oh, Maha, Mahadev. He goes, why are, you, why are you wasting your time chasing a bird? He goes, What is his offense? And Vyasadeva was laughing. He said, Don't you know that bird, that parrot, illegally heard the Bhagavatam? And Vyasadeva started laughing. He goes, Shivaji, just be <coughs> calm and tell me one thing. What's the result of, of hearing the Bhagavatam? And Shivaji said, He becomes immortal, he becomes deathless. And then, Vyasadeva said, if you become deathless, then how are you going to kill him? <laughs> and Shivji went, oh. He hadn't thought about it. He hung his head and he went away. See, so Vyasadeva, meanwhile, he was in his mother's womb for 16 years. And he was hearing all the Upanishads, all the Purans, all Srimad Bhagavatam. He was hearing continuously from Vyas. And after 16 years, Vyasadeva said, You come out now, you're giving your mother so much disturbance. You've been in there 16 years. So come out. And Sukadeva Swami said, no. He said, I'm afraid of Maya. If I come out, Maya will catch me. And Vyasadeva said, I give him my promise, Maya won't catch you. But he even, even didn't put faith in Vyasadeva. He said, if Krishna comes personally, then I'll come out only. If Krishna gives his personal promise. So that time, Krishna himself came from Dwarka and he promised, I promise you, Maya will not touch you. So immediately he came out of his mother's womb. He hit the ground and he immediately took the form of a 16-year-old boy and just went out of the house. Running. Running. Baby. And his father was chasing him, calling, come back, come back, my son, my son. And his father was he's just completely naked, he just walked off, and his father was chasing, my son, my son. And then Gurudev said that verse, which he quotes every day before he starts a class, that he was running after his son, calling, my son, my son. And the, his son never heard, never answered him, but he got an echo from the trees. And the trees were saying, who is a son, who is father, who is mother, who is wife, this is all my all illusion, give it up. So he was chasing after his son, and they came to one very beautiful pond. And in that pond were many, many beautiful heavenly damsels. They were completely naked, bathing, laughing, joking. And Sukadev Goswami was 16 years old, and very, very, very beautiful, dark, just like Krishna. His body was very perfectly formed, extremely handsome, Sukadev Goswami. He went right past all these naked girls. The naked girls were 16, 17, like that. And he went right past them, and none of them did anything. They just kept laughing, joking like this. But then Vyasadeva was chasing after his son, and he had a beard down to his knees. He's very, very old. And as soon as they saw him, all the girls became shy. They covered up their cloth. They, they went and they hid. 
And Vyasadeva said, my God, he goes, what's happening here? He said, my son is so beautiful, handsome, completely naked. He says, and he walked past you and you felt no shyness. He says, but I'm like your great, great, great grandfather. <laughs> He says, I came and you, you're covering yourselves up. He goes, I cannot understand you. Why are you doing like this? And then the damsel said, you don't know the greatness of your son. He says, your son is like a piece of wood. He says, he never sees this world. He never sees male, female, anything. He just sees everything as Brahma. He says, but you, have, you see this world. You have some discrimination, but he has none. That's why we felt shy when we, when we saw you. Plus it is, also we have to have yeah. discrimination. So Guru said, this is the Bhagavatam, he says, and then he said, there's no difference between this Tulsi Das Ramayan and the Srimad Bhagavatam. He says, only the Radha Deva, the worshipful object of each. The worshipful object of the Ramayan is Ram, and the worshipful object of the Bhagavatam is Krishna. Otherwise, there's no difference between these two. Gaur Pramanandi. Do you want to have Gurudev's lunchtime darshan? It was in Hindi, wasn't it? Yeah. <coughs> So Gurudev was saying, Sri Ram, this was today's darshan, he got Sri Ram. One day he sat down and he called all the Yadibhasis to him. And he said, I have not called you like God. I have not called you even like a king. He says, but you are like my prayer bandits, you are like my dear friends, and I am like your father. In fact, I am more, you are more dear to me than any mother or father could ever possibly have. I am your well-wishing friend. So then Ram started to instruct him that you got this body after so many births. So even the demigods, because as Gurudev was spoken, one guy's mobile phone went off and he disturbed the class. So Gurudev said, the demigods also want this human body to get back to you. He says, he says, and you think you're on call. You think you have disturbance with your mobile phone, but the demigods are on call 24 hours a day. Do this, do this, do this, do this. So they have so many just duties and responsibilities. They have no time for bhajan. They have so much enjoyment. They can always believe them. So even they're praying for a human body to do bhakti. He says, but we are like, and he quoted one verse, we are like, we have a pot of nectar, which is Hari Bhajan. He says, but we have, and this pot is a human form of body, which to hold this nectar. But we have emptied this nectar and filled it with poison of material and German. And material and German in Sanskrit is Vishai. And he said, Vish means poison. So material and German is poison. And the materialists complain, God is giving us so many troubles. He's giving us so many faults. Why is he disturbing us so much? <laughs> they blame God for everything. See, but they never understand that this is their own fault, their own karma is now coming back on them. He said, but there's no difficulty in bhajan. What's the difficulty? One time you wake up and you chant, Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare, Hare Rama, Hare Rama, Rama Rama, Rama Hare Hare. Even if you can't chant the whole mantra, just chant the morning chant, Radhe, Radhe. <laughs> he says, and do one pranam to God in the morning. Then you go to your work. So Guru is this person who gives this great relation, this Mahan Sambandha, with Sri Radha and Krishna. So a woman should only have one husband, not two husbands. So we have to have one point of devotion. So Hare means, and he went to an explanation of the Mahan Mantra. So Hare means Radharani. Radharani is that person, Hare means to steal. That person is Radharani who by her qualities, her beauty, her sweet speech, her service mood. She completely captures Krishna's mind and body. And Krishna is Hare Krishna. And Ram is Ram is that person who is dancing in the hearts of everyone and who gives happiness to all of everyone, especially the rich Vasis and the gopis. Then he told an interesting thing, Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare. So this verse has three di three different moods. Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna. So when Radha and Krishna are together, then that's Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna. But then when they're separated, then Krishna, Krishna, Krishna is alone, and Hare Hare, Radha Rani is alone. So, so this, when the very nice, the good devotee chants, that many, many moods will come according to this mantra. So Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, are we thinking Radha Krishna is together? Then Krishna, Krishna, or Krishna is alone, crying, where is Radha Rani? Hare Hare, Radha Rani is crying, where is Krishna? Then Hare Rama, Hare Rama, again they're united, Rama Rama, Hare Hare, again they're broken up. And Guru said, this is not for general people, this is only for the devotees. So that was enough. Then it was really funny because this man who came this morning, Prabhupada, when he was a boy, Prabhupada used to get him to chant. So Guru heard this and Guru made him chant. It was really funny, you know. It was really funny. Guru was laughing and Guru was really enthusiastic getting him on the chant.
It's really beautiful, actually. So, Gaur Permanently, Hari Hari Bo. And then, don't forget the universal form. You remember the universal form? Where Krishna saw the yeah, soldiers yeah, and stuff yeah, in his teeth? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> One question. Okay. <laughs> From the morning darshan, you're going to explain uh, to which, well, who the Dwija Pratt is. Let me get it out now. <laughs> you promised. After. After, after. I'm leaving okay. tonight. Okay, I'll tell you before you go. How are you going to tell me before you go? I'm leaving at midnight. I'll tell you when we get to the hall. They were the ones of the Brahmins, right? The yeah. ones that wouldn't get uh, Krishna Balaram, I think. Yes. Brahmins are like, what does he do in sacrifice? Go away. Krishna came to the... To the Krishna and all these cowboys were hungry, so they came to where all the Brahmins were doing sacrifices. Yagyas and offering many, many things in the fire and millions of preparations. So Krishna sent two coward boys to get something to eat off them. Mm-hmm. And they said, oh, dear Brahmanas, give us some offering. We are coward boys. We have nothing to eat. But you should offer something to Krishna and Ram, Baladev. You should serve them. And the Brahmanas didn't, they didn't agree, no. And they're like, they're vaishas. Why do we care? Yeah. What they're just coward boys and we're Brahmanas. Why should we waste our time giving them? They couldn't understand that the... And this was the, in the, Braj. Just outside Braj. I'm just sure. outside of the border between Braj and Matura. So they were very, very proud. Even though Brahman is doing all big Vedic sacrifices, chanting the hymns, they still couldn't understand that the purpose of everything they're doing was to serve Krishna who himself yeah. came to try to solicit their service, but still they were not agreeable. So the boys went back to Krishna. And Krishna said, Oh boys, do not be disturbed. He says, This is the pastime of a beggar. Sometimes he gets, sometimes he does not get. So don't be disturbed by this. He says, But you'd go again and ask the wives. So the coward boys went to the wives. And they asked and the wives and merely became ecstatic and and they loaded up all their baskets with all the offerings meant for the fire sacrifice and they took it all to Krishna. So why, what's the difference between the wives and the husbands? The husbands are doing Vedic sacrifices, chanting all the mantras, doing, offering home into the fire, but they couldn't understand Krishna. But why the, the, the wives could understand? Because the gopis used to sell milk products, <laughs> yogurt, butter, curd, ghee, traveling here and there selling their milk products. But where they go and they go to each house and what do they talk about? Krishna. Krishna is so beautiful, Krishna is like this, his food is like this, he smiles like this, his sideline glances like this. So, so they're hearing all this Harikata, all about Krishna, Krishna. So immediately they developed a desire. When will we see Krishna? When can we serve him? How can we get... Because they got the association of the gopis that had the desire planted in their hearts, I must serve Krishna. So the, but the Vedic Brahmanas, they're always outside doing other activities, but the ladies are always in home, so they never got the Sangha. So the, the Vedic Brahmanas, Brahmanis, took everything to Krishna and gave everything there. And, they let, and their husbands tried to stop them going, but they brushed aside their husbands. Yeah. Forget it. We're going to serve Krishna. And afterwards, Krishna told those, those Dwija Patnis, go back to her husbands and serve. And they went back. So I was asking, but Krishna said the same thing with the gopis. When he placed foot, all the gopis came to Rasila. And Krishna told them to go back, but they didn't go back. Krishna told the Dwija Patnis go back and they did go back. So I was asking Gridev, why? What's the difference between them? And Gridev didn't answer. But he, he said the Dwija Patnis had made offense. That's why they went back. No, he was joking. <laughs> you can tell what he's joking. He was, come on. He was joking. He was joking. He, was joking. he, was joking. he, said, do you think, he said to me, do you think they had made offense? <laughs> do you think they made offense? <laughs> so he said, you know. So I'll tell you you know, so tell us. I'll tell you after. <laughs> You're an after now, come on. I'm sorry. <laughs> <laughs> he said, I've said it so many times. You visit. What did you make this? 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 What और साधारण लोग भी जनता भी सुखी रह सके ऐसा एक जीवन बनाया है भगवत भाव में धार्मिक जिनका परिवार सुखी रह सके और उनका भविष्य भी सुखी रहे और जब मरने से भी निकल जाए भगवान के यदि कोई सुखी होना चाहता है इस जीवन में तो बिना भगवत उपासना के नहीं हो सकता अपना कर्म करो अपना जो कुछ व्यवसाय वाणिज्य करना चाहते हो करो नौकरी चाकरी करो किंतु भगवत भाव ने करके पापों से डरो ऐसा कोई काम न करो जिससे कि पाप हो यदि तुमको अपने शरीर में सुई चुभाने से दर्द होता है तो दूसरों को काटने से उसको भी कष्ट होता है 
इस चीज को समझो रियल के लिए इसलिए ऐसी कोई भी कल से मन से बचपन से दूसरों को पीड़ा पहुंचे और इस व्यवहार से दूसरे भी सीखेंगे किस तरह से एक नया समाज होगा इसमें समय यही हमारे
show great personality of Godhead. So how they can meditate? So easily how he is by chanting his name, they will come in our heart. Sir, finally it was there. Swamiji, finally, it was very touching uh, when you were speaking about uh, the uh, women discrimination and uh, the violence that is uh, happening uh, against women nowadays than what uh, it was uh, during the olden days. Uh, would you also uh, say this yes. same in English? Oh, you know that Sita Devi, Ramana was so lusty <coughs> and he was like a demon, but he was Ravan. the son of any Brahmin. And he took away Sita when she was alone in the forest with Ram. But Ram was not there Ram. and he stole. But what happened? He has one lakh son and <coughs> so many more than lakhs he has so many Grand sons. Wives. Wives. Sons and sons. But he was all their kings. His kingdom was made of gold and jewels, but because he was in a bad turn, he used to take beautiful wives and ladies and girls from here and there. He used to smoke and he used to take mud. And thus he was a spirit. Also we have so in history. Those are like this, rusty, not uh, giving respect, proper respect, respect to ladies. So this. But also, the ladies are also in fault. Now in the days, they come and walk in the streets naked half naked and they yeah, invite the young person to be like that. So they should also be like this, all of them, this, other people, also this part. So nowadays ladies are not in their control, they also invite all these bad things. This would be also proper. Thank you, thank you very much.